this episode will contain spoilers for Doctor Who mid-season finale for series six. So if you have not seen the mid-season finale, A Good Man Goes to War, do not watch this video. There will be spoilers. I love this season, this series of Doctor Who. Um, but I feel I need to give a little background about my Doctor Who experience to tell you where I'm coming from and how I feel about Doctor Who and um, Stephen Moffat's version of the Doctor. The first episode of Doctor Who I ever watched was The Doctor's Daughter, which I know wasn't a really great ex watching experience, but that was the first episode I ever saw. And it was with Den David Tennant, Donna, and Martha came back for a little bit. And, you know... I liked it, but I still had no drive to go and really watch it until I saw the episode Blink. Um, Blink was an amazing episode. Um, it really got me sucked into the Who universe, and I really became really interested in the show. But at the same time, I did not get and I did not have time to go back and go through the entire, you know, some um, one, two, three seasons to watch what I had missed. And they were up to up um, series four with Donna at the point where I had seen Blink. So my sister told me it was going to end. So I saw the finale of um, D David Tennant, the one with Donna. I saw the, the last episode with Donna was in that. But I decided that what I would do was since they're going to have a new Doctor and a new season um, with a new rise and everything, that I would start watching Doctor Who officially when the new Doctor came and start from there and then once I was done with that go backwards and so I started watching season the series with um Matt Smith with Stephen Moffat as the lead writer instead of Russell T Davis and at the beginning I wasn't really quite sure because I was very new to the universe but I watched it when I started watching it like really watching it I was sucked in like I became a full-out Whovian and I really you know the universe the history of it it has such a vast history that I really got it was kind of like a hist it was a kind of like um history lesson for me going through all the history of the doctor his different lives his companions and so it really was the catalyst for me to really get into the doctor who universe and I loved Matt Smith you know he's my even though I had the tenant experience I consider Matt to be my first real doctor because I watched the series really religiously when he was on it and so for me, Stephen Moffat's writing and Matt Smith acting is what I know of who. So when people compare, you know, Tenet and um, the classic series, I do not have that same history. I've been going back and watching Tenet episodes and watching Russell T. Davis's um, lead writing experience on the show. But for me, my first experience was... Moffat and Smith so that's where I come from in my frame of um, frame of reference in the Doctor Who universe so I know that from what I've heard and what I've seen the big controversy is just like because Doctor Who is such a long series with different writers different doctors different um, companions different ways of interpreting the characters and writing the storylines people really have very different standards opinions and levels of what they want in their Doctor Who experience. And I completely understand it with a series like this. I actually like Moffat's episodic way of writing the series. I know um, RTD, he had more like, um, you know, he one episode adventure, one episode adventure, one episode adventure. And you know, that was how he kind of wrote it, even though there were some connecting themes. But it's really like one adventure, one adventure, one adventure. It didn't really connect. But I like you know, with Moffat for there to be an overlapping storyline. I like that there are different mysteries and pieces that connect into making one big picture. I like that kind of writing. I like that kind of writing in my TV shows. So that really attracts me to his writing. I'm not saying that RTD isn't good. I still like his episodes, but I like the overarching themes. Now, this season has been very very kind of a mixed batch for me so far i like the first two episodes the um impossible ash and i and day of the moon those episodes were really well done i love river at 11 i am sorry i cannot help it like they to me i love that river it comes in such small segments but she leaves such a big impact 
and I love that. I love should just come in there, be awesome, and then leave. Like that's 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 how every love interest should be. Come, be awesome, and then get the fuck out. So I love that about her. And those episodes are really just strong. And they set the standard. And they set what we're looking for and what we're trying to find in these upcoming episodes. Um, pirate episode was kind of just like, that was like, you know, little episode. Doesn't really connect to anything except in the finale where they bring some of the characters back. But overall, it just was kind of like, meh, meh, meh. Um, the Doctor's wife was fantastic. I mean, you know, you could really feel the emotion when they met each other in the ending sequence and they said hello to each other. Like, that was just, that's just great writing right there. And Neil Gaiman brought his A-game, as he always does. And I just really thought that episode really showed people, without needing to see the entire series, the, the heart and the soul of the relationship between Doctor Who and the TARDIS. And really the, the, the heart of the show in general because at the end of the day you know doctor has his companions and his friends but at the, but no matter what it's always going to be him and the TARDIS and that was just really great to see um rebel flesh don't really like those episodes gotta say I don't really connect to any of the characters in them they're all really bland and the storyline it has been done already I was look, reading, um, watching Mr. Tardis reviews, and he was saying how these sets of episodes are exactly like the episodes that we saw in the last series with those lizard people. I'm just like, yeah, that's true. And it's the characters that we're dealing with, the people who work in the factory, are much less developed on top of all of that. So I can't, re I didn't really get into those episodes. The twist at the end was good, but I didn't feel it made up for the rest of the episode. But A Good Man Goes to War was just really interesting to me. And a lot of people have very mixed views about this episode. And I gotta say, you know, it has to do about, like, what they were expecting for it to be. Because from what I've seen, David, Mo um, Stephen Moffat has a reputation of kind of, you know, mind-fucking people. And, you know, making them really follow these intense storylines. But in this episode he did not do that like he did not go to the extremes people thought he was gonna go to and so they were disappointed they were expecting it to be something even bigger when you get the reveal that and i told you spoilers are gonna be in here that river song is melody pond and she's amy and rory's kid people are like oh that's so obvious and you know i kind of had an idea that's where he was gonna go with it that to me made the most sense without stretching the bounds of like you know, reality or whatever. And I felt like he had made so many clues and indicators for that to happen so that people could say, yeah, you know, it's a surprise because people were saying, oh, it's too obvious. I didn't think that could be it. People just saying, well, that'd be too easy. It's not Moffat. So it was a surprise because people didn't think he was going to go in that sort of direction. But even though it's simple, it makes sense. And when it comes down to it, we fans in the forums, we speculate, we analyze, we try to figure out who people are. We go into depth, more than I think some of the writers do at times, trying to think of every twist, turn, alternative meaning towards every episode, you know, every little segment, every piece of dialogue can have 20 different meanings. And so, of course, we feel disappointment because we set our standards so high that they cannot be reached. When you have an episode supposed to be like, this is supposed to be the, the Doctor's biggest thing or whatever, and this is a series that spans so many years and generations with all kinds of, you know, this is the biggest thing you'll ever have to deal with. Of course, whatever really happens will never meet the standards of what you're thinking. But I feel what's important is that what he revealed still made sense. You are supposed to have points so that the people who are going in depth can figure out what's going to happen. I mean, to take Harry Potter for an example, I knew before the sixth book came out that Dumbledore was going to die. I kept thinking that Dumbledore was eventually going to die because he's an archetype of the wise old Obi-Wan type character. And those characters have to eventually die because they are a crutch for the hero. For the hero to really step up and become their own person, their mentor, guardian person has to die. So when they were saying someone's gonna die in Harry Potter 6, I'm thinking, well, logically, it has to be Dumbledore. And everyone's saying, no, it's gonna be someone, it's gonna be Neville, it's gonna be Ron, it's gonna be Hermione, it's gonna be Dudley's, Dursley's. I'm just like, I think it's Dumbledore. And when it came out, they're like, I can't believe it's Dumbledore, that's so easy. But I'm saying, you say it's easy, but that 
made the most sense for it to be that way because what would you want it to be like do you want them to just be like oh she's a living incarnation of the sonic screwdriver because that would be really that would be a twist but it would be really dumb twists should make sense they shouldn't just be completely out of left field because that's not a twist that's just a, a plot hole waiting to be ripped apart but i think the other thing about it too is that you have to care you know you have to care about you know, the companions, about the new doctor, about River. I know a lot of people, River is one of those characters that your mileage may vary. I know Pur Purple Badger, I can't wait to see your comments because I know you don't like River's song. But you have to care about the characters, the companions, the, do the new doctor. And some people just, you know, they like a different sort of feel to it. They don't, they can't get into the new era and they just kind of watch it kind of lackadaisically or because, you know, they're used to watching Who's so just waiting for it to change. But I didn't see the big issue with this episode because it is a two-parter. You know, this is just one half of the, the complete story. And we have like six more episodes to go. Six, you know, 47-minute episodes left. And knowing that River is Amy and Rory's baby does not have lead to any conclusions. Like, we see that River's alive. It doesn't mean anything because if we're going to assume that she's the girl in the um space suit but not the one who shot the doctor because i'm not saying that the same person but the little girl that we saw before she's about seven or eight years old so in that time she has never been with her family you know she was created to be a weapon we don't know who she kills still because she could still kill rory we don't know what her relationship was like with her parents we don't know anything about her childhood we'd have no guarantee that just because she's alive now and sort of okay that that is what everything is in the middle because we only see the end product of River Song and that is not a guarantee about anything and we don't know anything about River Song except that she's Rory and Amy's kid that's it the, her reveal has opened more questions than it has actually solved because we still don't know anything we don't know what it means that she has Time Lord DNA does that just mean she's Gallifreyan we see she can regenerate has she regenerated more than one time what does that mean about her future form in the library you know and if River is dead in the future you know does that mean the pond family tree is under do Rory and Amy have more children there are so many twists and turns and stories that can come out of this one reveal that I understand why Moffat does these things, why he has these long-lasting episodes, because it makes for a more complete storytelling experience, but people, depending on their taste, might not like that particular story, and that's fine. But on a whole, I think that this series has been very good. Not great, because while... Like I said, I've only liked a few of the episodes that we had so far. That one two-parter and the thing. So three episodes so far have really dropped the ball for me. But the other episodes have been really, really good. Really well written. Good pacing. But we have to wait and see. It is not over. So I'm really looking forward to the next half of the series. I am happy that I'll be able to see it broadcasting live. Because I'll be in England Um next semester for a study abroad program so i'll be seeing dr who live which will be fucking awesome but anyway i'd love to hear your opinions about what happened if you disagree with me that's fine because like i said you know we're dealing with people the doctor who fandom is spans years different doctors different you know expectations and different ways you care and interpret about the characters um oh one more thing about river's speech to the doctor I thought that speech was brilliant because it kind of ties in about how heroes, at the end of the day, heroes, they go out, they solve the day, they solve the crimes, but they also develop a chip on their shoulder because of how great they are. They also, you know, they attract the danger because people want to be the one to kill them, to destroy them, to take them down. You know, you'll always see sometimes in a sword fight, like, oh, that's the famous blah blah blah. If you take them down, you'll be famous. And then they all run to charge and kill him, even though they know that he's going to slice their throats. Because to them, it's like, oh, glory, oh, attention. And I've been watching the seventh season of Buffy, which is horrible, by the way. But, like, there's this whole line that I kind of wrote down in my quotes book that Anya, like, gives, um... Anya gives Buffy basically saying like, you know, you know, you really think you're better than we are, but we don't know. We don't know if you're actually better. I mean, you came into the world with certain advantages, sure, but that's 
the legacy. You didn't earn it. You didn't work for it. You've never had anybody come up to you and say you deserve these things more than anyone else. They were just handed to you. So that doesn't make you better than us. It makes you luckier than us. And that kind of mentality, that thought of you're the hero, you're the one who saves the day, you're the better person. The doctor is such a character that while he's alien, he's so human. So he is susceptible to those same kind of human vanities that we are. Like that whole thing he's talking about, you want to be like Colonel Runaway. Like that whole scene completely shows what we're talking about. He knows he's a badass. He knows he can do whatever he wants. He knows he can inflict fear into these people. He knows he can intimidate these people and he uses that to his advantage. And at that point, he stops being a hero and becomes an anti-hero. And it makes this so many more complexities and so many more things interesting and dynamic about that doctor. And I really want to see where that's going. I want to see like even though he's heard that this speech, will that mean anything to him? Would he just be like, oh you're full of shit river, go away, go be an infant? You know, does this mean something new for the doctor? Is this a new era of the doctor? You know, all these questions are coming up and I'm really looking forward to what Moffat does because I feel it takes a really good writer to, you know, have the ability to have all these questions come up in just one episode. So, opinions, leave them, love to hear them, and I will see you tomorrow. I will be doing my TV reviews of The Killing by AMC, AMC's The Killing, the show Community, and Parks and Recreations. That will be coming up tomorrow in one big video. See you there. Love you. Bye.